Welcome everyone to this on-demand version of ARE training updated for 2024. I would like to thank everyone participating for taking on the important role of Assistant Returning Officer for your school. And we are mindful that most of you have taken on this role in addition to a high intensity position such as Business Manager and are very grateful for any feedback you have or suggestions to make your role easier. Just send us an email to eduschoolboards at act.gov.au. For those who are new to the ARE position, we'll just provide a little bit of background about school boards in general. So the school board is a formal mechanism for parents, carers, staff, students and the community to participate in school decision making. Each ACT public school is required by the Education Act 2004 to have a school board. And the primary purpose of a school board is to perform its functions whilst acting in the best interests of the school and its students. This presentation will mainly deal with school boards of general schools. So I'm going to go over the composition for school boards of general schools. Schools in special circumstances, which you can see listed on the slide, have their own instruments that provide for the composition of their boards. If you're the ARO of one of those schools and need some more information, uh, please contact us either by phone or by email and we can have a chat about how your school board is set up. So the composition of the board ensures that there is diversity and balance in the membership with the school's community stakeholder groups represented. However, all board members are required to act in the best interests of the school and its students, and therefore members perform their role in a board member capacity, not as advocates for their stakeholder group. Personal or stakeholder group interests must not get in the way of a board member's duty to the school and its students. Board members act collectively and with one voice rather than independently. The particular makeup of a school board does depend on whether or not a school has a parents and citizens association because whether they do or don't slightly changes the type of member that sits as a representative member on the school board. We'll go into that in detail a bit later, but just to go over the other members of the board first, Student members represent school students on the board for high schools and colleges. Staff members represent school staff on the board, including teachers and administrative staff. And there are two types of appointed member. So appointed members are an important part of the school board and are essential as they provide an independent voice to the board outside of representative members. Section 41 of the Education Act includes appointed members as part of the general composition of ACT public school boards. Luckily for you as the ARO, that process is generally managed by the directorate. Um, so we run uh, expression of interest processes to basically collect a list of people that are prepared to sit as appointed members on school boards. And then we consult with the principals and work out the best fit for those individuals. However, in contrast, board appointed members are optional. So you can see a maximum of two board appointed members uh, listed there. That's something that the board decides within itself, usually to fill a particular subject matter expertise that seems to be lacking for a particular reason. So appointments for appointed members include consultations with principals to ensure consideration of conflicts of interest or other circumstances relating to the appointment of the particular candidate. A good example of this is a school considering its board makeup and whether that is representative of the school community at large. Appointed members can be reappointed for a new term after their term has finished, but they must be formally reappointed through the EOI process. You or the appointed member or the principal can indicate in an email or through the EOI form that you or they wish to be reassigned to the same school board. Appointments are required for all members through the processes set out in the school board handbook. If you believe a member of your board has not been formally appointed or reappointed, please contact us and we'll work out how we can fix that. Thanks. So now we'll go through the important people for the appointment of school board members. So firstly is the returning officer. So the Director General of the Education Directorate is the returning officer for all school board selection processes, although this power is delegated to Governance Branch, which is where IA and the school board team sits. The role of returning officer is to appoint persons and end appointments to school boards in accordance with the Act and to resolve disputes arising from selection processes and school board operations. 
Any issues in relation to school board selection processes must be provided in writing to the returning officer within 14 days of the conclusion of the selection process, and that can be done by emailing the school board's team. With the exception of board appointed members, the returning officer has the exclusive authority to appoint a person to a school board. In all cases, the term of the member's appointment does not commence until the appointment has been formally made by the returning officer. The results of a selection process must not be made public until after an appointment has been made by the returning officer and the result has been provided to the principal by the Education Support Office. And now most importantly, we get to all of you, Assistant Returning Officers. So unlike the processes for members of the board, there is not a formal process for identifying an ARO. Given the work required in the ARO position, particularly the need to work closely with the school's principal and board chair, it is recommended that the ARO is a member of the school staff. If you are moving on from your ARO position, please notify us um, and ideally provide a contact point for your successor if possible, so we can maintain accurate records. And this ensures that we have the right contacts when we are setting up for each round of elections. So the key difference between the assistant returning officer and the returning officer is that the assistant returning officer, all of you, basically assist with the process of the elections whereas the returning officer is the formal delegate for approving appointments. There are some eligibility criteria to meet in order to nominate for particular positions on the school board. So staff members must be currently employed as a member of staff of the school, and it applies to all staff, including casual employees. And similarly, student members, where applicable, so only for certain high schools and colleges, must be a current student at the school who attends classes or participates in an education program conducted by the school for at least 12 hours per week. And like I said before, it only applies to certain high school and colleges. There are three subtypes of parents and citizens members. And note, this is a change that started in 2021. So if it's been a few years since you've been an ARO, make sure you're across this change. So for schools with a parents and citizens association, there would be one member from the PNC Association of the school and two members from the parents, guardians of carers and students at the school. And then if there aren't enough parents to fill those roles, then the parents uh, positions can be filled by a member of the local community of the school. So the PNC Association member on the board must be a PNC associate, must be a member of the PNC Association of the school. Um, and that's defined in each association's own constitution. Membership is usually automatic for parents and carers of students at the school, including any who teach there. Uh, an adult who is not a student's parent, guardian or carer must first become a school PNC member uh, before nominating to be the PNC member. Someone nominating to be a PNC Association member on the board must also declare on their nomination form that they intend to be actively involved in the PNC Association of the school during the term of office for the board. The nominee does not have to be, but can be, an office bearer of the PNC, such as President, Secretary, Treasurer, or on the committee of the PNC. Now, for schools without a parent and citizens association, there are two members from parents, guardians and carers of the school, like before, and then one member from the local community of the school. So the local community position is to be filled by someone who lives in the local area or otherwise connected to the school, but who is not a parent, guardian or carer for a student at the school. So for schools without a PNC, if no local community member can be selected, like no nominations are received, then up to three parent members can be selected. So for key dates for 2024, the directorate publishes an annual calendar of key dates for each stage of the selection process on the school board's webpage. This is published at the end of the year, ready for the following year. It should be used in conjunction with the school board's handbooks. Nominations forms can be found on the school board's page on the education website as per the included link. So the selection of school board members must be undertaken in accordance with the procedures outlined in this section to ensure that boards have enough members to enable them to function. Templates have been created for each stage of the process and a process map is available on the school board's webpage. Before the end of the year, the ARO must identify the school board appointments that are due to expire on 31 March of the following year. 
The ARO may need to liaise with the directorate to check the terms of appointments for their school board members, and this can be done just by sending us an email. If vacancies on the school board are due to arise, then the assistant returning officer must prepare the school community for a selection process. If there is more than one position in the same membership category that will become vacant, the ARO should inform the principal so that the board considers staggering appointments. To ensure there is a continuity of knowledge on school boards, it is recommended that appointments to the school board be staggered. School board positions can be identified as one or two year appointments so that a large number of school board appointments do not end up at the same time. So for example, if two staff member positions on the school board will become vacant, a decision may be made to fill one position for 12 months and the other for the full term, 24 months. This also avoids, avoids the requirement for selection processes for all positions to be conducted at one time. And that decision, decision to stagger school board appointments is made by the board. So the ARO must ensure that the notice of the selection process is clearly communicated to the school community in advance of the nomination period. This should include displaying information on school notice boards, in school newsletters, on the school website and through other means as appropriate, such as an email to all relevant members of the school community, social media pages for the school and local community publications if required. The notice should provide information about roles and responsibilities of school board members, the term of appointment, one or two years, and the contact details of the ARO for further inquiries. Throughout the nomination period, the ARO should review submitted nominations to ensure they are valid, and to be valid, a nomination must be received by the ARO within the nomination period, signed by the nominee, submitted to the ARO using the preferred nomination form, you can find that on our website, legible, completed by a nominee, and the nominee must fulfill the eligibility criteria. For valid nominations, the ARO should acknowledge the receipt of nomination to each nominee. Care should be taken to ensure that nominee information, such as name and email address, is not disclosed to other nominees. The acknowledgement should include information about the date and time that the nomination period closes, next steps, and withdrawal of nomination processes. If a nomination is not valid, then the ARO must attempt to contact the nominee as soon as practicable to inform them and give them the opportunity to resubmit prior to the closure of the period. If the number of nominees uh, validly nominated is less or equal to the number of positions requi required to be filled, the names of all nominees are to be submitted to the returning officer for appointment. If the number of nominees validly nominated is greater than the number of positions required to be filled, then an election must be conducted, commencing one week after the closure of nominations. If the number of nominees validly nominated is insufficient to fill the number of positions required to be filled, the assistant returning officer must proceed to have their appointments approved by the returning officer and undertake a further call for nominations for the remaining vacancy. If that occurs, please contact us um, and we can make sure that we're tracking in case an election does need to be held for that position in the future. The ARO will notify the school community that an election is required and the name of the nominees by informing the school community via school notice boards, newsletters, school's website and through other means as appropriate. The notification should include a brief statement from each candidate outlining why they are seeking appointment to the board. The notification should occur as soon as possible after the need for an election is determined, as the voting period must commence one week after nominations close. It must include relevant dates and information about the online election. So between the week of nominations closing and voting opening, the Education Support Office will organise the online platform for the online election and provide a link for AROs to disseminate amongst eligible voting classes. So for example, staff for staff elections, students for student elections. Voters will require the school's full letter code to access voting. Unless otherwise stated, voting will commence on the day at 11am and close at 11am on the day it closes. So at the end of the voting period, the Qualtrics system, which is what we use to run our online elections, will automatically count the votes and provide a report to the school board's team to arrange appointment of successful candidates. And AROs will be provided with a copy of the results for their records. Candidates can still appoint a scrutineer at the candidate's discretion, who can receive a copy of the results of the vote at their school through the ARO. 
They will not be able to notify others of those results unless they're raising a dispute with the ARO and principal only. Uh, scrutineers can also receive information on the operation of the voting system to ensure integrity. So the school board's team will arrange the appointment of the successful candidates by the returning officer at the directorate. Once appointments have occurred, we will notify the AROs and principals of the appointments who will inform the candidates and the school community. Please do not inform candidates or the school community of the outcome until you have the go ahead from us because we'll be providing you with the results before the appointments have been formally made. So you need to wait until you get word that those appointments have been formally made first. So as you can see, appointments commence on the 1st of April for the most part, but if it's an out of session appointment, such as after an unexpected resignation, the commencement date will be as identified by the returning officer. So in the event of a dispute about a selection outcome, the ARO must detail the issue uh, in an email to the school board's team and provide it to us within 14 days of the matter being disputed. The issue will be considered by the returning officer who will determine one of the following, either that the selection is void and a new selection process must be undertaken, the selection outcome is incorrect and a different candidate is to be appointed, or the selection outcome is correct. The decision by the returning officer will be provided to the principal within 14 days of being notified of the dispute. If a new selection process must be held, it should be, contact, it should be conducted as soon as possible. And if you believe a dispute is likely or you have been contacted regarding a dispute, please give us a call as soon as possible to discuss. So casual vacancies may arise throughout the year. If you do receive a resignation, get in contact with us and we can assist in working through which process to fill that position is most appropriate. Um, you'll see the sort of different options that are lif listed on the slide depending on where your school's sitting at and also how close it's been to the last election period. But our school board handbook on selection and appointment of members has a lot more information about casual vacancies. And thank you everyone for participating in today's session. Please reach out if you have any questions by phone or email and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have a lovely day.